Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and today we have three really fine gentlemen here. Way, way, way back, they go in river sticks, and we have Paul Gordon, raise your hand, Paul, so that they know that you're Paul, Bob Gordon, right over here, and Jim Gordon. Now that's in the order of their ages, right? And um, Paul, would you say that's also an order of looks or not? Well, I would say you so. Say, you would say so, <laughs> probably in the order of looks. You people are from River Sticks, and you still live out in River Sticks. As a matter of fact, you probably invented River Sticks out there. How long have the Gordons been out there? Bob, how long do you think they've been out there? I think it was 1942 we moved down there. When you moved out there, where'd you move from? Poe. Well, I mean, well, it was just a little ways <laughs> the wood well, down the road. Well, all our lives then. Pardon me? We've all our lives right close. Right up. there. I mean, you've always lived there. Now, what about your father and mother? How long? They're they're originals from there, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And when did they come to Wadsworth? Were they born in Wadsworth? No, they were born in Medina. They're born in Medina, but they've always been in this area. Let's start with those two, Rose and your father, and um, tell us a little bit about them. And um, since you're the oldest one, um, Paul, we'll let you uh, tell us the, the genealogy of your dad and his father and mother and your mother and her father and mother. So, Well, my dad was born in Medina County. And his first name was? Paul. Paul, same as yours. His father's name was Ed. Ed. Gordon. And his father's name, my great granddad, was Joe. Joe. And they were all from the, this area? They was all from Seville area. So you're talking about for the last, what, 150 years or better that they've been yes. around here? And, yes. And you people have come this far yep. to the present day and then you have family here. Now, how about your mother? My mother? Rose? You can ask Bob about Bob her. He can tell you more about, about her. her. Oh, Mom, she was, she come from, she lived in Wellington for a long time. Rose what? Horner. Uh, Rose and a Horner. Horner, yep. right. And she had a brother that lived in, in um, um, River Sticks. Yeah, she had two brothers that lived oh. out there. Kiefer. Kiefer. Right. Uh, Paul. Kiefer Horner. Kiefer was granddad. Her mo her dad's name Kiefer was. Right. And Robert was. Uh, he served in World War One, and uh, he was named after. That's I was named after him. Mm -hmm. I was Robert Kiefer Gordon after granddad and Robert, my mom's brother. Right. And then Paul Horner. He lived there in River Sticks, and he had a. He had ten kids, I think. Ten children. Ten children. Now, this is going to be the, the tricky part. We're going to have to try to figure out who those ten kids are, were, and where they are, and how they're related to everybody else in Wadsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try that? Uh, who wants to try that? Do you want to try that one, Jim? I'll have a go at it. Okay. Uh, Helen was the oldest. Helen Horner. Helen yep. was the oldest. And whom did she marry? She married a uh, fellow named Scalia. Last name was Scalia. S C A L I A. Yes. And from Akron, wasn't he? I believe he was from Orville. Orville? Okay. And that's where she still lived. In fact, Helen died last week. Did she? How old was she when she died? Sixty nine. No. Sixty nine? Mm -hmm. mm hmm. She was the oldest of them kids. Sixty nine. And then there was Kiefer. He died about uh, I'd say six or eight years ago. Then there was Margaret. She's Margaret's still living. She's in Virginia. Tom lived in Medina. Tom died a few years ago. Then there was Mary, who died about a year ago. Then I'm going to start stumbling a little bit because it was, uh, I believe, Bill and Richard. Oh, and Roberta. Albert, I think I'm going to stop there because that's about all I, I well, can remember. I, uh, Frank, yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank, I was going to say, I was trying to think of the baby's name. Frank was the baby. Frank was the baby. And he was much, much younger than we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Much, much younger. As a matter of fact, um, I think that um, 
Kiefer was about 10 years younger than we were, weren't we? Kiefer's, like uh, Kiefer's my age, 68. You would Close. be now. Would be <laughs> Close now. to 10. <laughs> yeah. Close to 10. And then, now that's one of your mother's brothers. Mm -hmm. You had another brother. She had five brothers. Five brothers. And where, where, are, the, where are the other three, five, four? Well, uh, they're all dead, but uh, she was Enos Horner. Enos. Who lived here in Wadsworth. And he was, he had a son. Who Earl. Was, Earl, who's now dead. Yes. In other words, your mother's brother, Enos, made you and Earl Horner cousins. Right. right. First cousins. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then she had a brother, Carl. No, we had two girls, Enos did. Yeah, but I mean mom. Yeah. Had a brother, Carl, a brother, Earl, brother, Tom, who died way back before I was ever born. And who else? Rob. It was another brother. Then she had two sisters, Ethel, who married an Adams. and Which Pearl, Adams? Uh, Cy, what? Cyrus. And then her sister, Pearl, married uh, Bill Spice. Ray Spice. From Ray Spice. Wadsworth. Okay. okay. Now that takes care of your mother's family. Mm -hmm. Bob, hit us with all of the Gordons. I'm um, what? All the Gordons. You want what? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, yeah, the Gordon, the Gordon family. Oh, the Gordon family? Yeah. Your father was Paul. Yeah. And he had how many brothers and sisters? Oh, he had uh, one sister and uh, one brother and another half brother. Okay. Who was the sister? Lucille. Lucille what? Grim. Grim? Yep. From Lodi? No. No? No, she was from oh, Poe and right around there. Right around there. Mm -hmm. And who, what was her husband's first name? Carl. Carl Grimm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then a brother? Uh, her brother was my dad and Ray. Ray. And Ray, Ray Horner. Yeah. No. I mean Ray, Ray Gordon. Yeah. And who was Ray Gordon? Ray was, uh, well, it was Dad's brother, yeah, right. younger brother. He was the youngest of the. And whom did he marry? <clears throat> uh, Mildred. What was her last name? Marty. Huh? Marty. Marty. Mildred Marty. Okay. He married, and Bill Gordon. He was a half brother. He married Ethel. I don't know her name either. You remember Ethel's? Nichols. Nichols. I couldn't tell you that. Big Brother has a good memory over there, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good now. Now then, Paul, we have to find out who Paul is. Um, you were born when? 1927. And uh, what day? 16th of September. September 16th, 1927. Mm -hmm. And you went to Walter Central High School? No, I went to Post School. You went to Post School? Golf through grade school <laughs> to the ninth grade. The ninth grade, I went to Medina. Went to Medina School. My dad and mother bought the place in River Sticks, and I came to Wadsworth. And I graduated from Wadsworth, Wadsworth High School. Wadsworth High School, mm -hmm. right, okay. Now, you graduated in 45. Yes. And um, things were happening in 45. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you do when, as soon as you graduated? Well, I got a little card from what the post office. <laughs> And I took it home and I said, Dad, they're going to draft me if I don't sign up. I said, will you sign this card? And he said, sure. So he signed the card for me and I went to Cleveland and I joined the Marines. You joined the Marines. And how long were you in the Marines? About uh, two years. Two years. And where were you in the Marines? Well, I went to Cleveland and I asked them when they wanted me to come back and they said, it ain't when do we want you to come back? He said, you're in you're and in. you're headed for South Carolina. So you didn't even get to go home? Nope. To pick up your underwear? Anything? Nope. So we went to South Carolina and I did my boot camp in South Carolina. Camp Lejeune? Nope. Paris Island. Paris Island, okay. And then uh, I shipped right out from Paris Island. I went through the South Pacific, the Panama Canal, and out to the South Pacific and we hauled Japanese prisoners from the islands <clears throat> into China for work details. So then I was stationed in China with an MP battalion. 
You're an MP battalion. Mm -hmm. Now describe yourself at age 18. Five, six feet two, right? About 225 pounds of solid muscle. Playing football, I thought I knew everything in the world till I joined the Marines. Found out I didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they had to teach me everything over again. And what did you learn in the Marines besides being a good policeman? Well, I learned that you took orders. You took orders. And kept your mouth shut. Well, if I remember your, your, your parents well, they probably didn't let you get away with a whole lot anyway. No, I didn't no. get away with much at all. No. <laughs> the lilac tree was right close. <laughs> That's right. Um, tell us a little bit more about uh, what happened then right after the Marines let you go. Well, I got discharged in California. I flew into Chicago, took a train from Chicago to Cleveland, and walked home from Cleveland. That was in the newspaper, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, and then I went to a few football games that Waz was, high, was having, Then I went to work for John Long. Tell us who John Long was. Well, he owned a store here in town, wallpaper and paint, and carpet, carpet, linoleum, mm -hmm. and I went to work with him, and, well, I went to work for his brother-in-law, with his brother-in-law. He taught me the carpet and linoleum business. And who business. was his brother-in-law? Dick Stormer. Dick Stormer, right. Lived at River Sticks. Okay. Now, how did you happen to get associated with John Long's? Well, I store? needed a job, and he had me delivering wallpaper and paint around after school. After school. Mm-hmm. That's how I got connected. Did anybody, anybody else work at John Long's from your family? Mm, no, I don't yes, think so. I did. did you work yeah, a short time? For John for a while. So did your mother. Yeah, yep. she yeah. worked there a long yeah. time. Yeah, she worked there. She worked there before did you got there, right? Yeah. Your mother was uh, worked there as well. So then um, we're going to come back to you in a second, but let's take Bob through the same. You graduated, what, 47? 47. 47. And uh, things were a little bit less hectic in 47 than they were in 45 when, when, when Paul graduated. But what did you do then? I graduated, and as soon as I graduated, I got my uh, draft notice. And I went to Cleveland, and they turned me down on account of my knee. I had one knee, I don't know, I stooped down, went to get up, and I took one hand to help myself, and he said to go over there and sit, in a, and he made me sit on a table similar to this, and he twisted my leg around, it snapped out, and he put it back in, and he said, uh, go get over there, you don't, you're not going any place. And I was strong and big, and I wanted to, I knew a lot of the boys I was up there with, and I wanted to go with them. I didn't want to be left back and then go later on. But uh, I got a four. Who were some of the other guys that went with you that time, Bob? Uh, Nate McDonald was one of them. He got he got killed. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, I'm trying to think of the guy from Seville. There was a boy from Seville. Oh, what was her name? They owned a farm out there across from Barry. Detweiler? Huh? Detweiler? Yeah, Detweiler. One of the Detweiler boys went with him. I am not sure whether he got turned down. I think he did too. Something was the matter with him. Describe yourself at age 18 as a senior in high school. <laughs> I didn't know what fear was. <laughs> did not know what fear was. Mm. What did you, um, how did you play football with a, with a bad knee or whatever? Oh. Or is that how you got the bad I, knee? I had that knee. And it kept uh, bothering me a lot, and I went to Dr. Zwick, and he said uh, he could operate on it, but 90% would be successful, and 10% I'd have a stiff, stiff knee. And I said no, so then I went to another doctor to see what he, he said about it, and he, he told me the very same thing. 90% would be successful, and 10% I'd have a stiff leg, and I didn't want that. I was scared to death of that. You played football in high school. Yeah, it'd go out and I'd have to sit down and take the other foot and straighten it out to put it back in, and I was all right. Now, when you said you had no fear, that is exactly right. <laughs> you had no fear whatsoever. You, you would go through a, a line as if that line were nothing more than paper dolls. Yeah. But, um, but where did you get that? Both, all three of you have had that kind of a... Now, is, was your father that way, or is it... 
I don't no, know. Your mother was not. A, was a my sophomore yeah. year, my first year in Wadsworth, I made the football team. I know you did. And then I was captain for two years. What? Um, where did you get that fearlessness? Mm. Just growing up, well, farming, growing up, and and getting disciplined. We got a lot of discipline. A lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> when we go home and mom would tell dad such and such and. When dad give you a licking, you had a licking. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did you live in, River, in Riverstick? We're going to get to you on the same thing here, but where did you live, live in Riversticks? South, uh, south, uh, three houses, the fourth house south of Riversticks on 49. On, on 49? Yeah. Right there at the corner. Yep. It was close to the corner. Right. And uh, the farm's still there. Yeah. And who lives on the farm now? There wasn't much of a farm. It was just a small... Small acreage. But they have a barn. Yeah, there was a little there shed out shed back there. Yeah. And you live there. Yeah. Does anyone live there now? I can't tell you. The but you don't live there anymore. No. No. Okay. I bought the place north of that. North of that, right? Yeah. I own that. And I what live was there. Uh, what kind of a business was there very close by? Mm, there was that store in the corner that was all corner, and then I, I sandblasted there for a long time. What about time. the cider mill? Yeah, that cider mill. It was there. It wasn't there as long as the rest of us was. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was people moved in there and moved out, two or three people, and and then they, then these people owned the cider mill. They moved in and put the cider mill in. Bob, what year were you born? What day? I was born uh, <clears throat> May twenty third, nineteen twenty nine. Nineteen twenty nine. And then we have a little kid here who's born several years later. <laughs> yeah. The baby. Baby. Jim, yep. tell us when you were born and tell us a little bit about your days in high school. August 5th, 1936. 1936. High school, I don't uh, know if I try to remember much about that or not, other than playing football. Playing That's football. That's what I liked. And now, describe yourself at age 18. Just a little bit different from Paul and Bob, weren't you? Yeah, I was a little refined. <laughs> 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 no, I just... <coughs> I don't know, kind of run-of-the-mill guy, I think. I just, nothing spectacular, just on my own kind of thing. Trying to live up to the reputation they created in town. <laughs> what was that reputation they created in town that you had to live up to here? Well, everyone thought I was supposed to be tough. Well, weren't because you? they were. No, I was a real gentleman. You were really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, uh, Bob and... Um, Paul were very, very tough, you know, extremely. As a matter of fact, I would suspect, I'm not really positive about this, I suspect that you probably were the two toughest I've, I've ever come across. Would that be accurate? Mm -hmm. Probably the meanest brothers. <laughs> meanest brothers? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we, well, you'll have to take uh, your word on that one. Oh, boy. But you were the refined one. Huh? Yes. Now, <laughs> things were a lot better when you graduated in, what, 53 or 4? 5. 55. A lot better. What did you do when you left high school? I started painting with Bob when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of mad at him for starting me in the painting business, <laughs> and I've never gotten out of it. Never got out of it. Still do it to this day. That's what you do. But Bob, you got out of it, didn't you? Yeah, I got out of it. What did you do now? What do you do now? Or what did you do before you retired? Where's Sandblasted. Sandblasted. Yeah, I used to do bridges for Wayne County every year. I had so many, so many months I had to take care of them, and uh, then I. How on earth did you get involved with sandblasting? I mean, that's a well, that's a rough, rough. We rough had a lot of job. sandblasting and painting, and we, but that kind of went together. Uh, you'd sandblast something and then you'd paint it. So I got into that, and then after I worked for Wayne County for a long time, they. The man down there that run the place, he was a, he was an engineer, and he talked me into buying a gunite machine. A what? A gunite machine. That What's sprays that? cement. It's a really hard job. That's worse than sandblast. You, you spray mix, cement? Huh? Yeah. And it's the hardest way of putting cement on there is. You can build pools, and they had a lot of bridges down there, the embutments and a lot of the ceilings and uh, some of them bridges was cement and you'd spray a, a coat of that on. It went pretty dry. You had to put it on dry. Mm -hmm. I mean, just add enough water to make it stick. And after you got it on there, uh, you'd get away till, it, till you could finish it up. Then you'd spray it on to the right thickness 
when it dried just a little bit, and uh, you could finish it all up like that. And that that's the hardest way you can't. I used to go for Mac Industries, and they'd had tanks in six neighboring states, and then they even went to Florida. But uh, then I sold my gunite machine, and then and just stayed with the sandblasting. And, and uh, they they I had two machines. I bought two machines, and they they sent up from Mac come down and bought my old machine, sent it to Florida. And uh, what was hard about it, Bob? Heavy. Heavy. Heavy, and then now, you had to. Do they have, have they improved upon that machine, the Gunite machine? Have they improved upon that to make it a little easier, or is it mm -hmm. not run by computers, still run by, by they brute build, force? They build dams with that. That's the best way of building a dam or anything like that, it is, because it gets so hard. And, and uh, But that spraying, it, it's... It's dusty. You have to do it dry. It's what they call a dry machine. I had to have the sand dried, and then you mixed the the sand and cement mixed in a machine. It had two compartments, and you'd work out of one compartment until that went dry. And when that went dry, you throwed about six levers, and he was on the other side. And it just was a continual thing. They had a big water thing for the uh, terminal tower up there. It was under the lower than the Lake Erie, and it uh, we had to do that for the water sprinkler service. The tank underneath, we had to gunite that. Mac put the tanks in, and then we had to seal them with the big gunite machine. Wow! Now um, I have never heard of this before. Are you the only one around who does that? They want what? Are you the only one around who does that? Yeah. Pretty well. For heaven's sake. So we have a person in Wadsworth who was the pioneer in gunite machines. I, I, I did my, I went to Columbus and found a machine down there that they, they was selling. And I went down and bought that first. And it wasn't near as fancy as the second one I bought it. First one I bought, you just had to keep shoveling it in. But the uh, second one I bought, it had them tanks, you could fill one tank and then while that was running out, you could be loading the other tank, and you'd switch it over, and you'd go. wasn't no downtime. Now you were the person who did the work. Yeah, pretty well. So you took care of your um, muscular prowess with that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hard job. A lot of times, just mud over your waist. Oh, and them oh, tanks from nice. Mac Industry, they put all kind of septic systems in for big housing develops and the whole thing. He, and then uh, we went to Pennsylvania, Indian Reservation, all over and did work like that. Now when you talk about Mac, you're talking about Mac vaults in, in yep. uh, Valley City or yep. some, somewhere up in there? Yep. How about you, Paul? What did you do? I mean, did, did, or did you find an easy way out? No, I had a carpet store. Carpet store, that's what mm -hmm. you did all the time? Yep, over in Seville. You didn't have to wallow in mud though? No. And. Um, then we have a younger brother here who went into painting, mm -hmm. and um, he put on white clothes every single morning. So mm -hmm. he must have had an easy job. What about what about that, uh, Jim? About as easy as I could find, or I'd have found an easier <laughs> one. <laughs> now we have to get some more about the relationships here. With nine kids on your mother's side, or ten? Was it nine? Five, eight, eight. You mean my mom's family? Yeah. Eight plus your mother? No. She had five brothers and two sisters. Okay, so eight on your mother's side, three on your father's side. Mm -hmm. Who are the people you're related to in Wadsworth? At one time you related to everybody in Wadsworth. Now, who are you related to? I was related to Bill Spice. Bill Spice, okay. Yeah, he married my mother's sister. Right. And he worked at the injector. Right. Then uh, one of the Horners lived in down on Walnut Street, Carl. Carl. Carl lived down in Walnut Street down there. Enos. And Enos. And Enos. Elvin. He lived on Prospect, I think it was. Marcin. Marcin Horner. Yeah, Marcin and what, what was it? Donna. Donna. Donna and, well, that's and Earl, that's young Earl. Those were Enos's children. Enos's children. And then mm -hmm. Earl, he lived here in the Wadsworth area. Yeah, we lived in the uh, Mennonite Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are all related. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And what about um, the um, the Gordons, the Ray relationships of uh, cousins here in, in Wadsworth? Ray, he lived out at River Stitch for a long time, and then he moved to Wadsworth. Yeah, we Luce. never had many Gordons in town. Lucille. Never had the, always in the River Sticks area. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We want to make sure that if you, if you get anyone, uh, if, if you forget anyone, to let us know because one of the most valuable parts of this program is to get, is getting the relationships Watchers. here. We've, mm -hmm. um, we had a couple of people here a couple of weeks ago that um, I think we were able to identify something like 40 or 50 different Mm -hmm. Little tentacles out there that are relationships mm -hmm. here with, with that person. River sticks during the 40s, 30s, and 40s. Probably, um, Paul, you remember more than anything else since you're, I mean, Poe is, I mean, that's River sticks. Mm -hmm. But uh, Poe, uh, what is it, 300 feet long? Or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, very close to it. Uh, tell us what River sticks was like during the 20s and 30s and 40s. <laughs> well, there was a a brickyard out there at one time. Where was the brickyard? Well, you're the first person to bring about the brickyard. You're right. There was a brickyard out there. Where there was, was a match factory. A match factory. Tell mm -hmm. us where they were and tell us a little bit about it. Jim, can you? Stick, Stick's Hill had the first, I think it's where Robin lives right now, had the first match. Wilson was her name. They had the first match, but they couldn't ship it no way because it was, Too it dangerous. was, yeah, on account of the fire hazard of it. And then the brickyard was back in, uh, oh, back on Blake Road, back way back in the woods. We used to hunt back there once in a while. And you Did you? Now, tell us they'd... about tell us about the match company on Sticks Hill Road. We're gonna have to identify what Sticks Hill Road is now because 50 years from now it might be a different name. Mm -hmm. We are at the intersection of Route 49 and 57, and 49 going north. 49 east. going south, mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit north there, and south. That hill that goes straight up is now called Sticks Hill Road. Right. Yep. Years ago, we used to call it River Sticks Road. Mm -hmm. Now we call it Sticks Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And then the 49 used to be just plain 49, mm -hmm. and now it is called River Sticks Road. Now, if you go up Sticks Hill Road, about a third of the way up, there was a match factory. Is that correct? Well, well, not a factory, but a house. What? Second house up. Yeah, it was right that's at the bottom only of the not hill. quite, not quite up. No, that was only three or four hundred feet. Before you go up the hill, then. Yeah. Okay, on the on the south side of the yes south side of the road. Yeah, that'd be the south side of the road, right? And do you remember it at all, Paul? No, I no, don't. It was, it was that was gone when we got there. When you got there. But there was a match company yes. there. Now, Bob, you had talked about hunting in the brickyard there on 49. Blake Road, which of course... Down Blake Road, yeah. Yeah, Blake Road, you go down 57, about, what, a mile or less? Well, you go down, straight down on 49, through okay. south. Oh, yeah, in other words, you're going to go on 49 south, and then you come to Blake Road. Yeah, then you turn left and left. go down past the creek. It goes on and left at that point, does it not? Yeah. Okay. We're going past the creek, and if the, if the creek is no longer and there, the there creek was is about a, what, quarter of a mile? Back, way back east, in the woods. Way back in the woods. There's wood. a big pit back there where they used to dig the North clay. or south? Uh, north. South it would be the brickyard off from Blake Road. It goes east. Yeah, south, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Southwest almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about southwest. Way back in there, now, describe what you remember about that brickyard and what happened to it. I just remember seeing uh, oh, a lot of the bricks around. Ray lived there, my uncle lived there, right there where they went back into that, and I used to, that's how I went back in there hunting all the time. And uh, there was a lot of bricks laying around and just everything was pretty well gone. Do you remember any reason why and do you remember any names associated with it? No, I don't. How about you, Paul? No. Of course, it'd be long after you were you were born. D uh, what um, did you ever pick up a brick from there? Oh yeah. Do you ever have any of those? No. You don't have any. I'd like to get one for the historical society. <laughs> yeah. So that you know we could have one because that was that br that brickyard actually predated the one on um, Mount Eaton Road. Right. Which mm -hmm. of course was was. 
brick and tile at that time, mm -hmm. and, uh, what they call something a general brick or something yeah. like that now. Of course, nothing is being built there. Uh, that stopped many years ago. Um, when you went hunting back there, did you see the excavations where they mined the clay? Yep. You did. Mm -hmm. And did you actually walk in that area? Yep. It's kind of a swampy area. A swampy area, could. right. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> all of River Sticks was a kind of a swampy yep, area at one that time. time. At one time. Now, when you were living up there on at the crossroads, or mm -hmm. just south of the crossroads, mm -hmm. and then you moved where? Well, I moved to Chippewa Lake. No, I mean, uh, your family moved. Or you didn't move? Uh -uh. No. No, they never moved anywhere. Never moved. You always lived right there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you live right now just north of... Uh, yeah, I, I bought that place. Oh, you bought it, but you didn't um, move there that, no. as a small child. I, I built a house in 47 in Chippewa Lake and never moved in my life until my wife died. I what lived there. Like? I lived there all the time over at Chippewa Lake, and, I'd, and then I bought that place at River Sticks north of it to keep a lot of my equipment, and then I built a barn out there, that okay. big white barn. Big white barn. Uh huh. But before we got to River Sticks, that, that store that's on the corner, that was a blacksmith shop. A blacksmith shop. At before we come to River Sticks. And do you remember who owned the blacksmith shop? Fred Freed. Fred Freed. And would we spell that F-R-E-I-D-T? Yeah. Right. And uh, we, after all, we always have to spell these because people will sometimes just, you know, hear them and spell them and we want to make sure we have the right spelling there. You had mentioned something here, and I want to get it before we lose it. Um, you said your wife passed on. Who was your wife? June, Gor uh, June Pickering. June Pickering. And tell us a little bit about June Pickering and her family, where they lived, uh, not too terribly far from where you were. Well, they, they, lived, in, they lived in Cleveland for a while. and uh, When well, they were in Wadsworth, I mean. Yeah. Her, their their parents bought that place and none of the kids would stay on the farm out there but Ernie June's dad stayed and uh, he got the farm part of the farm and mm. where was that farm give us a location geographically it's so. south south of river sticks on 49 how far about a mile quarter of a mile quarter of a mile not quite a mile okay quarter way of a mile. back in way back in it said on the right hand side way back in it's on the north it'd be west side the, of the road yeah the west side of the road mm -hmm. way back in yeah and that's where june grew up yep right tell us a little bit about the pickerings and a little bit about june well june she she lived there all her life and well when she got, up, I think she, maybe she was 10 years old when they moved out there, something like that, eight or 10 years old. And she lived out there all her life. Never lived no place else. You know, I remember June Pickering from elementary school. Yeah. And it seems to me that I've known her since she was a first grader, but maybe, yeah. she, maybe it was a second or third grade. She went grader. most of her time. Yeah, most of her time. Describe her. Oh, quiet person. Very quiet. Yep. And how did you meet her? Mm, living there at River Sticks and riding a school bus with her. And, and all that. Yeah. And you kind of liked her. Yeah, I so. used to walk her home. She'd, she'd get out up at River Sticks just so I could walk her home. You'd walk her home. Yeah. yeah. And then he married her. Yep. And that was, how long were you married? 49 years. 49 years, yeah. And she died when? Oh, she died in 1999. I think it was in... June of 1999. Yeah. I can't so, tell you this exact date anymore. And what about um, children? Who wants to who wants to go first on children? Jim, you want to go on children? I guess. Uh, married Marilyn Miller, mm -hmm. and we had four children. And Marilyn Miller was uh, Mort Miller's daughter. Mort was Miller's a, daughter. Was a, was a painter. Sign painter, and he had a couple of different hobby shops in Wadsworth yeah. over the years. But uh, he traveled. He moved lots. And last was in California, right? Yes. Well, he came back to Ohio the last couple of years, but he lived in California a long time. In fact, years ago, some fellow tried to hire him, and he told the guy his idea would never go. So he wouldn't take the job, and it was Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Mort said, you'll never make it with these characters. Yeah. Well, I guess he did. Yeah. He had a son, Greg. 
Greg has a horse farm in uh, Ripman. He's also a car salesman, isn't he? He dabbles in used cars, yeah. yeah. Then I have a daughter, Gay Bowen. She married Holly Bowen. She manages the uh, Grant store in Wadsworth. The which? Grant's. Candy used to be the Yum Yum Tree. Oh, okay. In the North End. Yes. Then a son, Gary, who's a painter, lives in Medina. And a daughter, Linda, who lives in Wadsworth. Linda has three children. Her husband died uh, 11 years ago. Who's that, Linda? Linda Miller. I know, but what, um, who was her husband? Bruce Miller. Bruce was from uh, North Olmsted originally, okay. I believe. Then they moved down here. He worked at Gow Printing in Medina, and they moved down here. Now, whose children are these? These are my children. Your children? Mm -hmm. So you have a son-in-law who's gone? Yes. Okay. And Greg? Greg, yeah. He's about 50 years old or so? He'll be 50 in August. Okay. And then? Gay is 48. Gay is 48. Gary, 46. 46. And Linda, 41. Linda, 41. And she's a widow? Yes. Wow. It's a young widow. Yes. She's been a widow for a long time? Mm, yeah, 12 years, 11 or 12 years. Now, how about your children, Bob? I, my oldest one's Robin Silvis. Silvis? And, yeah. She's a county nurse. In the, in the uh, health in, department? In the health department. She's a county nurse. And, and then I got Jamie Shalabovka. She's a, she prints up things for the newspaper for the, well, it used to be Gal Printing. I don't know what the name of it is right now. Mm -hmm. But she prints up all kinds of sale things and uh -huh. and does all the... She works then for uh, the Gazette, is that it? it? Well, she works for all papers. All the papers, I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of that stuff. And then I got a younger girl, uh, Dana Powers. and uh, Which Powers family is she married into? Oh, it's a Powers family from Brunswick. Okay, not not from Wadsworth. No, and uh, she she worked for the the mail department in Medina. She's kind of a foreman up there, and uh, that's it. That's the girls. How about Paul? Your kids. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> well, I had a son named Ted. He graduated from Colorado State. He just retired as assistant director of health for the District of Columbia. No kidding. Yep. And I have a son, Tim, an auctioneer in Frederick, Maryland. No, a con auctioneer. Now? You ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> I got remarried. I got a son 10 years old. That's good. He's on the honor roll. They send him to Worcester College for three days every summer for high ability kids. Straight A plus student. Where does he live? Ripman. I bought a new house in Ripman. So you have a 10 year old son? Yes, I do. And then you have two sons who are. 55, Ted, and Tim is 50. And then 110. 110. Okay, well, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Particularly, he, he might turn out to be President of the United States, you never can tell. <laughs> i tell you something, he's a smart one. He's a smart one. Now, here's the big test. Grandchildren, don't forget any, because if you forget them, you're in trouble. Grandchildren. Boy. I have twins, Sean and Shauna Bowen, Jim and April Gordon, Brent, Luke, and Anna Miller, Nicholas, Shannon, and Zach Gordon. You got them all. That's them. Okay, don't forget it. You're in trouble, Bob. <laughs> I got a, a girl to my, to Robin. She's a Turner, Peggy Turner, her name. They live in Creston. And then I have Bobby Shalabovka. He's Spell in Shalabovka for us. <laughs> I can't. I can't even <laughs> pronounce it right. <laughs> Everybody asks you that. <laughs> I don't think they, well, they can, it's S-Z, 
That's what fools you a lot okay. of times. Mm -hmm. I can't spell it. B A L. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't. Well, spell that's close it. enough. <laughs> we got. We got. K A. Place, so. I know that. But that's it. That's all the grandchildren sure. I got. Two okay. of them. You can't turn back on this, and you know fully well that <laughs> one, one of your grandchildren sees it. <laughs> for it. Paul. I got three. Three grandchildren. Yeah. I got two grandsons down in Maryland, Ted's two boys, and then Tim has one little girl. She's about three years old. That took care of that. That okay, took care now. of it. Now I've got to get into some of the other kinds of your neighbors when you were living in, in River Sticks were. When, let's go with, um, with you first, Paul, and then we'll go down here to Jim to see how they changed. Who were your neighbors when you were growing up? Henry Kaler, Henry Ed Kaler. Beck. Henry Kaler, mm -hmm. K-O-E-H-L-E-R, K-O-E-H-L-E-R. Yeah, yeah. yeah, was he an old man or a young yep, man? Yep, was an old man. And his He's wife's name was Mary? I think so. <coughs> okay. Then there was Ed Beck had the threshing machine. Ed Beck. And tell us a little bit about Ed Beck and the threshing machine. Well, he had a threshing machine. He'd go around thrashing for these farmers. Did he have children? I couldn't tell you that. He had a brother then, uh, what was his name? Clarence. Lived up, Clarence. 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 Lived up on the hill. But there's Ed and Clarence. When, they were when you say the hill, you're talking about Sticks River Sticks Hill. hill. Way up, the, way up yep. the top there, okay. Mm -hmm. And anybody else? No. Uh, what was the, hmm? what was the woman's name that was a preacher? Oh, Russian. Oh, Russian. Yeah. yeah. Russian. Mrs. Russian. She was a preacher. I think she was Holy Roller, wasn't mm -hmm. she? She was a preacher. She used to have the church right straight across from our house. There was a church, well, right at the edge of where Harold Farnsworth lives now. Mm -hmm. But that used to be her church. Church. She had a son, Donald Russian. Yep. Yep. Right. And then uh, Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah. Okay. Bob, who were your neighbors when you were growing up? You're a little mm. bit younger, but you probably had some of the same ones. There was camels. They had uh, what they had. They had twelve or fifteen kids. <laughs> camels. Yeah. A lot of them. Either one of the two, twelve or fifteen. Yeah, twelve or fifteen <laughs> kids. They had. Pretty good size family. Boy, they had a lot of children. Yeah. And um, they were younger than we were. Yeah. You know, considerably younger, the Gamos, yeah. Um, did they have a daughter, Janet, or not? I don't remember Janet, but they they had kids that was They had age. Geraldine Bob was one age. And Herb was older. Oh, really? Yeah. They had some kids that was older. Gamma? Yeah. Yeah. They Where'd had a daughter, Herb Gamble. He lives in Ripman now, and he he was older. He's Paul's age. Where'd they go to school? Wadsworth. 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 Gamble. Yeah. Penny was the oldest. Yeah, Penny was older yet. Boy, I'm drawing a blank here on the Gamble. Wow. Yeah. Boy, there were lots of them. Yeah, there was a lot of them, I guess so. And who else were your neighbors up there? Uh, Caskey. Caskey's. Frank Warren. Caskey had the store. Pardon? You had the store. Yeah. Anybody else, Bob? Uh, God, there was uh, Paul Pickering. He was. Yeah, you knew, you knew him, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, Paul Pickering. That was my father-in-law's brother. brother. And uh, I'm trying to think of some of them that Paul didn't name. Hattie Kraut. Yeah. Who's that? Hattie Kraut. Lived right Hattie on the Kraut. corner. She wrote for the paper. Yes. She was been a school teacher for years. Well, wasn't there a um, another one there from uh, River Sticks um, uh, who wrote for the paper? Herzog. Herzog. Stella? Stella, Stella, Stella Herzog. Stella Herzog. Was she also from that yeah. area? Yeah. She was up in Still, Sticks Hill Road. Sticks Hill Road. Then there was yeah. Caskies that lived down side of Hen Kaler. Caskey. Caskey? Yeah. Oh, that was Junior M. Hall. Yeah. It was uh, Walter Caskey, and then he had, he had, or she had a son named Junior M. Hall. Yeah. He went to school in Watson. Yeah. M. Yeah. M. Hall. Yeah. And who were, who were your neighbors when you were growing up, uh, Jim? 
Kyle's, August's, Pickering's, Stormer's, Caskey's. In fact, when you mention the Caskey family, that's where River Stick started. Their family was Wilson's. Uh, and they, the brothers, started River Sticks, which they was Wilson River. Corners. Wilson's Corners. Mm -hmm. And that was probably in the 1840s or 50s, was it not? Uh, yes, I would think that, that, yes. They had a whole, whole section of the cemetery marked off with Wilson's on the stones down there at River Sticks. They all expected to die, did they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the ones that didn't, I guess, are still there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, in school, who were your friends? You, you, uh, who were some of the guys you palled around with, the girls or whatever? Levi Mills. Levi Mills. Nolan Foy. Nolan Foy. George Nolan Foy. Yep. Uh, Lauren Krosky. Lauren Krosky, South End. Uh, Pronises. John. John and his sister. Sister uh, um, Jean. Jean. Jean Pronis. Yeah, she was older than John. Uh huh. Wilbur Mills. Wilbur Mills. Right. Yeah. Had a sister, Margaret. Yeah. The Greens. The uh, Janice Green. Janice Green. Uh, Bud Prince. Bud Prince, right. Mm -hmm. I didn't forgot about him. His mother owned the bar uh, there. Yeah. Well, about everybody I graduated with was my friends. Well, of course, you know, but we wanted to hear who these people were to get their names in here. Yeah. So that when the person who writes the history in a couple, <coughs> three or four or five, well. Sim Coxes. Sim Coxes, Carl. Yeah. And, uh, how about yours? Griners. Uh, Griners. Griner. Yeah. I was going to say right. Bob, Bob Griner. Pardon? Yeah, Bob Griner and I used to yeah. buddy around a lot right. together. He was also a toughie. Carl Simcox. He I married used. Uh, Mary Long. Mary Long, yep. He died now. And then who? Carl Simcox, of course. Mm -hmm. Francis Fiscus. Yes, Francis. Well, not Francis Fiscus. <coughs> yes, it would be Francis, yeah. Mm -hmm. she had Her dad there. had the garage up here. Auble Street. Yep. <coughs> uh, there was. Weldy Girl. Weldy or the. Weldy. Who? Weldy. Barbara? Yeah. Barbara Weldy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helen Truex. Helen Truex, class of 47. Bud Doyle? Yeah. Leo Doyle. Leo. And who were some of the other ones that you remember? Oh, there was, uh, I'm trying to think of this livestock dealer used to be out here in back here Brothers Long's. Garage. Longs. Long's, yeah, Longs. Pa uh, Walter? Paul. Paul. Mm -hmm. And, uh, his dad. Ed. Yeah. He was a livestock dealer. Right. And um, then he had a brother. Um, Mel. Mel Long, wasn't there? Mel, Melvin. Yeah, Melvin yeah. Long, yeah. Melvin's dad. Yeah. Right. Anybody else? Boy, I had lots of Pisanelis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Julius. Julius. Norma Brocker. Norma Brock Brocker, yeah. right. As many of the names as we can get in here because that's that helps to identify some of these mm -hmm. people. people. Betty Ernest. Betty Ernest, right. Uh -huh. Junior. Junior Ernest, uh -huh. he's a little younger. I knew the older boy, but not real Ed. well. Yeah, Ed. I knew Ed well. You knew Ed? He would yeah. be in your class, right? Yeah. He's gone too, isn't he? Yeah. Betty's still living, Junior's still living, and Donnie's yeah. still living. Right. Jim. The young kids. <laughs> Guy Hall. Guy Hall. Nelson Schultz. Yeah. Dick Wolford. Yeah. Jack Budorf. Jack Budorf. He had a bad Budorf too in uh, mm -hmm. your, your class. Yep. Ralph Pickering. David August. Yeah. Marilyn Miller. Marilyn Miller. <laughs> Paula Neath. Doran Desiree. She died early. She died about 18 or 19. She and Guy both. Guy did too? Guy was pulled through a stone crusher over at uh, PPG. Wow. Yeah, in 1963. <coughs> yeah. Anybody else? Hmm. Daryl Steele. Daryl Steele. I don't know. I guess I'm too old to remember the rest. Hey, come on. <laughs> You're too old to remember. You're all of us here. Now, very, very quickly, do the difference between the teachers that you had in 55 and the teachers you had in 45, 10 year difference. Name some of the teachers you had that you remember. 
O.J. Work. Oh yeah, the principal. Uh, what's it? Alice Hartman? Alice Hartman. Uh, hmm. What course of study did you take when you were in school? Well, I had chemistry and psychology and okay, general math. Who was the math. chemistry teacher? <clears throat> Sunderman? I was trying to think of it. Sunderman? Things. Yes, yes. And what was the older lady's name that was the math teacher? The old lady, the lovely elderly woman was uh, Harriet Crable. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can she remember she took, years old, she took me by the ear two or three times. Oh, you did know? she really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the agriculture teacher. Morningstar. Morningstar. Yeah. He behaved in his class, or he had a paddle about that long, and you bent over and got it. He was big enough too. He, he used to spit four. He used to claim it. He couldn't lift you off the floor with that paddle oh, with <laughs> one swipe. Oh, <laughs> Pretty strong. <clears throat> and how about you, Bob? Uh, Mrs. Britlinger. Yeah. Uh, Britlinger. Huntsberger. Yep. And uh, who's the shop teacher? Roar. Ralph Roar. Still Ralph living. Roar. 97 years old, still living in Worcester. Is he? Mm -hmm. Ralph Rohr and... Uh, I'm trying to think of the... I, had, I took machine shop and I was in the... Uh, I had two teachers down there. One died. Yeah, one died while we was down there. Frost. N yep. Bill? Frost and then... Bill Frost. Then there was a bigger man come in. Goodyear. Yep. He come in and... He told us, that, he told me one time, he said, I come to see you, I had to get my grades way up. He said, I come to see you graduate, and he said, that's what I want you to do. So I worked pretty hard <laughs> to get my grades up high. He was kind of a bald-headed fellow, wasn't he? Yep. <laughs> and um, you got your grades up high. Yep, I got them up high so I could <laughs> graduate. <laughs> now what about a refined kid here? What about... <laughs> Uh, I remember the Hildebrands, Mr. Hildebrands, and Mrs. Hildebrand. They were, both dead. they were killed in the car crash. Yes, and Jack Schaefer. Jack Schaefer. Harvey Grunwald. Harvey Grunwald. Miss Miller. Miss Miller, which one? She was at uh, Isham School, centralized. Oh yeah, Audrey Miller. Audrey, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mrs. Brittlinger. Mrs. Brittlinger, she was a Hartman. She was a, originally a Wasworth girl. Hartman, Mary Brittlinger, then Baldwin. I graduated with oh, Don yes. Brittlinger. Don yes. Brittlinger, right. Don Brittlinger. Who's her son. Mm -hmm. right. And they had a, a daughter, they had a, she had a daughter, Jeremy Brittlinger yes. also. Mm -hmm. She was older. Yes. Mm -hmm. And who, with who else? Miss Allen, math teacher. Allen. Miss Allen was at the no, high she school. With, she was not there when we were there, Miss Allen. Probably not. No. Uh, Sears, King Sears. King Sears. He'd been there a long time then, because oh, he was there when I was there. Yeah. 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 Good at what he did, too. He oh, yeah. Very, very good. Very good. He, he sang with the Fred Waring Choir. Mm -hmm. It was good. Well, anything else that you can remember about these relationships? Uh, okay, now then, you now live, did you ever live in Wadsworth? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. but you live where, where do you live right now? On Wadsworth Road, on Route 57. Okay, and who are your neighbors now? Well, I live right near where John Gerbrick had his roofing and heating shop. Okay, and, uh, tell us where that is and tell us something significant about what used to be in the front lawn of Gerbrick, John Gerbrick's uh, shop. Well, at the intersection of Blake Road and 57, okay. there used to be a watering trough. Watering trough. Where is that watering trough now? It's they, People there tore it out okay. for some reason. Who it's knows? Watering trough. We used to call it the watering yes, trough. Yes, mm -hmm. right. yes. And who are some of the neighbors there now? Uh, Boy, I don't know. Welch's live next door. Which Welch? Bernard. Bernie Welch. He's retired from Chevrolet. Right. And Mr. Angst. I don't even remember his first name. He used to live beside me. Okay. Um, there's a Whelan family out there. I guess I'm not very neighborly. Well, Baldwin's live around the corner. Yeah, Baldwin lives around the corner. Both cars. Yes. One west and one east, right. And the Phelps family used to be there on the corner. On oh, the corner, Phelps, Bernie Phelps. Yeah. Yes. Um, when you say you're not neighborly, you know, when I was growing up in Silver Creek, 
with the exception of a couple of people right next door, the next neighbor was a quarter of a mile, the next one half mile, <laughs> mile mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Didn't have a lot. You're living in River Sticks right now. We're almost out of time. You're gonna have to. We'll have to hurry. But what? Um, who are your neighbors now? You're still living in River Sticks. Abrams and uh, uh, Kearns. Now, which Kearns is this? Oh, well, there's Jimmy Kern lives across the road, and then up the road, his dad lives just up the road they, a little way. Jim a Kern, while, right? His name, young, young Jim and old Jim. Right, they've been here for a while. Yeah, so. they've been there a long time, and. Okay. Uh, Oh, golly. Can't think of their name when you ask me that. <laughs> well, that's, that's perfectly okay. What I'm trying Farnsworth? to Farnsworth? Who's that? Farnsworth was their neighbor. Yeah, Harold. Harold Farnsworth. Harold? They used to live down. Um, on the farm, on down the farm, on 57. Down there, uh, southeast of. Um, is that right? Southeast on 57. Yep. yep. Just north of um, where E.J. Thomas lived, mm -hmm. right there. Uh, but they now live. Across from where the cider mill was, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Just back this way a little. Back this way from the from the old cider mill. I'm trying to establish the the, the families that are no longer there. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Bob, your family, you're you're probably the only one really left. The well, Farnsworths, maybe, but you're probably the only one really left there in River Sticks. Mm -hmm. There was an, there's another Farnsworth that lived just down, and there's a Cadle that's that's my neighbor. Cadle. Cadle. Kale? Cadle. Cadle. I don't think I know those people. The, uh, the, the Cadle, late, she works at the license bureau, license bureau uh, down here. Are they, they, have they been around long? In the yeah, they've been there years. Cadle, yeah, she was a Kern. Oh, Kern, okay. All she right. was a Kern and okay. she, she married this Cadle. Cadle. All right, okay, the Kerns she I has, know, yeah. She has Danny and, um, and then she has a girl. I didn't recognize, but I'm glad you brought that out. That the relationship with Kirtle and or Kittle and Kern. Kern. She was a Kern, and she married a Kittle. And what about the um, the other big family that was out there? The um, mm, they had all girls and one boy. Um, oh, they lived right right there at the at the corner. Uh, I can't think of it right this very second. Um, you're living now, however, in Ritman. Ritman, yeah. So you, but when did you last live in the River Sticks or in the Wadsworth area? Ooh. Hmm. Probably 35, 40 years ago. And where did you live at that point? I had, I owned the house right on the corner there at River Sticks. Right on the corner. And who were, who was, who were living right close to you right at that, that time? Well, I bought it off from Bill Kyle. Bill Kyle. Caskey he owned the yeah. store. Mm -hmm. Russians lived behind me there. Okay. Henry Keeler lived down the road. So we're talking about the old timers. Yes. And uh, of course, they're that was the first house I ever bought. They're all gone now, though, aren't yep. they? Yep. Yeah, most of them are all dead. Mm -hmm. Who is the oldest person right now living in River Sticks? Uh, probably the Firensworth, aren't they? Mm. No. I'd say Mrs. Stormer. Mrs. Stormer? Yeah, Mrs. Coffee. Stormer. Okay, she's up then close to 90, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. We have come to the end of the hour. This has been very, very interesting. And one of the things that I've been trying to do is to get some of the outlying areas. Um, we still have some people on the Bill Road to get and some people on uh, south on, on 94, way, way down by, by uh, Wall Road, and some people from the Silver Creek area. But uh, little by little, we're, we're getting them all. And I want to thank you. We have come to the end of the hour, as I indicated, and people like the the Gordon boys. Uh, what did you say that they were the tough ones, and you had to straighten them out and all that kind of yeah. stuff? <laughs> look at the wonderful legacy that you people have left, and Wadsworth has made a wonderful people like that. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you. You bet. You. Thank, Thank you. you.